Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Machine Gainer. I hope you're having a really, really good day. So I got an email from a company. I've not heard of this company before. It's a microphone company called Fine Fine. I only know like the really, really top brands, all right? Because I'm a little bit of an idiot and I'm not very worldy and I'm not very cultured. So I got this email. They asked me if I wanted to review their microphone and I was curious because I've not heard of the brand as to whether or not it would be a good microphone. I told them I would review it, but on one condition that I can be as brutally honest as I want to be about the microphone. They were brave enough to say yes to that, so they sent me a microphone. Here it is. I'm gonna be reviewing it alongside the HyperX Quadcast. I think that these are sort of a similar level of microphone. This one comes in at around about 100 to 150 pounds, depending on where you're buying it from. And this one is around about 50 pounds. It's about half the price, and I really wanted to see what the difference was in the quality of these two devices to USB condenser microphones. So I know quite a lot about the HyperX Quadcast because I've used this for a long time. I used it for about six months continuously on stream and for my YouTube videos before I moved to an XLR mic. So I'm really interested to see if the Fine Fine K683A is comparable to the quadcast better worse or if it's just good value for money so as part of this video i will be doing a giveaway for this microphone the box is a little bit scuffed because amazon decided to send it with the label on the outside of it they literally didn't even put it in its packaging but if you want to be in with the chance of winning this microphone all you have to do is look out for a secret word within this video actually it's not that secret at some point in the video i'll stop the video and just say this is the secret word all you've got to do to be in with a chance of winning that is like the video subscribe to the channel and then drop a comment Comment below using the stupid word I'm going to give you at some point in this video. Hopefully you find this microphone review interesting, particularly if you've not heard of the Fine Fine brand before. Within the video, I'm going to be doing a brief unboxing. I'll try out the sound quality of the microphone and then I'll test the sound quality against the HyperX Quadcast. Then I'll just give my overall thoughts on the microphone and you can make a decision on whether or not you actually want to buy that microphone and use it or not. As I said, it's about half the price, actually a little bit less than half the price of the HyperX Quadcast. Widely regarded to be one of the best USB condensers to microphones. If you do decide to buy the Fine Fine K83A, please use my affiliate code below because it does support the channel. And yeah, I'll be very grateful. Let's do this. The box is fairly small, clean. They've not gone over the top with the packaging. The box has the usual gubbins, an installation guide, some promotional stuff. And then we get straight into the microphone. Now, the first thing I noticed about the microphone, the build quality is really, really good. It's got like a heavy metal casing around it, which gives it like an expensive premium feel. Yet it's at the sort of lower mid-level pricing. I picked this up and Fine Fine refunded me the money for £49.99p. So £50, probably $65, $70 in the US. It comes with an angled joint that you can connect to like a boomer arm or you can connect to the tripod that it comes with tripod itself is made out of metal as well so that again just gives it a really weighty feel there's no danger of this thing just accidentally toppling over unless you give it a really big shove they've not overdone it on the packaging here they've literally just put all the extra accessories that come with it such as the pop filter and the wire and the tripod into the box next to it the wire itself i've got here it's about one and a half meters long so it's pretty pretty long it's certainly long enough some of the microphones only have like a one meter cable and that's always really annoying with microphones one thing i found really really interesting about this is that they've got a usb a and the usb c connection here so if you're anything like me and you don't have any spare usb a connections you can move to a usb c and use some of those ports up on your computer if you're not already using those up or vice versa as well. So it just gives you that option. So the microphone was actually a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be. It's probably 60% of the size of a HyperX Quadcast, which I quite liked. I think combined with the metal casing and a really solid metal sheath around it, the build quality really does genuinely feel very good. I was actually quite surprised at that. I thought it was gonna be like plastic or something like that for the price range. Interestingly, the HyperX Quadcast does have like a lesser solid feel to it. So it does come with a a gain control but the gain control button i noticed is a little bit small i would have preferred this to be metal and a little bit bigger than it actually is it's actually plastic and quite small as you can see it comes with a headphone jack as well so it's got audio monitoring with it as well one thing i did really really like about the fine fine k683a the positions that you can use for this microphone so what i mean by that is it's got like a like a, an axis that allows the microphone itself to swivel on itself so that just that allows lots of different angles and then it allows on the arm joint more options for you to kind of tilt it this way as well. This is definitely a weakness of some of the microphones, including the HyperX Quadcast. So attaching the pop filter is really, really easy. It takes just a, a few seconds. It literally just slides over the top. And the actual microphone casing itself in terms of the sheath at the top of the microphone is made out of metal too. So really, really good build quality. 
The pop filter to get rid of plosives and things like that is, is made out of plastic, but it'll just do its job and it looks quite professional. So just a little size comparison with the Quadcast HyperX and the Fine Fine. As I said, it's quite considerably smaller, but a little bit wider if you include the pop filter. There is no shock mount for this microphone, which possibly might be a weakness. I'm interested to see if the desk noise will be picked up with little bangs and things like that as a result of not. The Fine Fine does not come with polar patterns, which might be a weakness. So I am very interested to test whether or not it picks up background noise. For example, my mouse clicks and keyboard typing, things like that. That's definitely one of the strengths of the HyperX Quadcast. Although they both have the gain control, the HyperX at the bottom there, the question is whether or not that's actually good value for money or not, because you're paying more than double the amount of money for the HyperX Quadcast. Okay, I'm hearing these two audio tracks back for the first time. Uh, I'm just going to listen to them raw and just give my kind of instant reaction. I really don't know what to expect here. Just for reference point, I did normalize the audio levels on the microphones by doing clap tests and things like that. So the audio levels of the two microphones should be kind of roughly at the right level. We're looking for like the quality and clarity of the audio here and what the sound of my voice is out of the box. A secret giveaway word is goose. The Fine Fine K683A sound out of the box. No filters, no gates. I'm really impressed with that. It just sounds really, really clear. Let's see what the HyperX sounds like. I've, I'm, I'm so surprised at how well out of the box. I've not touched a single set in there, not even put gates on or filters or anything. I did notice I could hear my keyboard and clicks when I was setting this up though through the microphone. So you do need to apply gates and stuff like that. Let's listen to the HyperX here. The secret giveaway word is goose. This is the HyperX Quadcast sound out of the box. No filters and no gates. Wow. Okay. I'm kind of blown away by that. The HyperX doesn't sound horrendous out of the box. The HyperX has got like a slightly more, well, actually a noticeably more tinny sound out of the box. I don't know what could be causing that, if anything. It might just be how it is out of the box. But Fine Fine is noticeably better out of the box. I just want to point out at this point as well, I'm not being paid for this. They did give me the microphone. They pay paid me the money for the microphone to, to do this review. But I only agreed to do this as long as I could be, like, completely honest. I'm genuinely amazed at how good this microphone is out of the box. I just want to say as well right now, I will always be brutally honest about the products that I review if I review any more. So I'm just going to try a few of the things now with both microphones to add like a gate and stuff like that, just to make sure I can get rid of some keyboard sounds quite easily, because uh, that's obviously going to be very important for a condenser microphone, particularly one that's not on a boom arm. I would, if you're a streamer, strongly, strongly recommend getting yourself a boom arm. It means that you can create a little bit more distance from your microphone and the keyboard and your mouse as a minimum and this is a really really good invest probably one of the best investments you can make is a boom arm but if you can't afford to get a boom arm i'm going to do this review without the boom arm just using the built-in stand the tripod stand for the fine fine and the hyperx stand which looks a little bit like this it's kind of got like a it is metal funnily enough the metal on the stand on the hyperx is actually feels like a better build quality than the hyperx itself there goes a future sponsorship with hyperx sorry guys <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to have a listen to see if any real difference has been made by adding compressor and obviously a noise gate. A noise gate, you shouldn't expect to get too much of a difference because that literally just determines when it's being sort of turned on and off. So the microphone quality itself isn't changed. But with the compressor, that can distort the sound slightly. So it's interesting to see how the microphone reacts when you add filters. These are just added through OBS Studio or perhaps for you guys, maybe XSplit or Streamlabs OBS. You can enhance the sound further with external programs that are specifically for or EQ. So this is the HyperX sound test with filters. Just a reference point, these are the condenser and noise gate settings I'm using on the HyperX Quadcast. Both the compressor settings and the noise gate settings on the HyperX I found difficult to do. And I remember this when I was using it uh, like a year ago or six months ago before I got an XLR mic. It was always difficult to get the sensitivity right. But the benefit of the HyperX is that it's got the polar patterns, which offset some of that difficulty. I've done tests here to basically try and remove sound from the keyboard whilst also making sure that the microphone can pick up relatively quiet sounds from my voice as well. It was definitely a lot easier to do this on the Fine Fine. But once again, these settings here, they are obviously suitable to me right now in the moment, and these would be tweaked over time for you guys. The secret giveaway word is goose. 
This is the HyperX Quadcast sound with some gates, filters, and compressor added. It did still sound quite tinny, but I actually didn't think the audio quality was overall too bad in the HyperX Quadcast there. The HyperX is a pretty good microphone. Bear in mind this microphone, I have actually used it as well for six to 12 months. So this is a used HyperX Quadcast as opposed to a brand new one. But even still, I still picked up a little bit of tinniness with there. It's not, not quite an echo, but just like almost like a sound of echo. And this room is pretty well insulated. The sound quality in general in this room is pretty good so i'm not going to blame like the room for that it's definitely the microphone build let's try out the fine fine as well now okay so i've added some basic gate settings and like a compressor to the microphone it took me like two or three minutes it probably took me a little bit less time because i've done quite a few of these but basically what i'm saying here is within five to ten minutes you can set this microphone up to drown out keyboard settings i was able to slam my keyboard quite hard actually and it, it cut out the sound and there's a distance of about maybe one foot between the microphone and the keyboard Board. Of course, you may be able to extend that with a boom arm. The compressor settings took a little bit longer to get right, but I've got managed to get them on there as well. And just for info, this is what those settings look like. Secret giveaway word is goose. This is the Fine Fine K683A sound with some gate, filters, and compressor added. The fine finds a lot better. Clarity, the quality, the echo, the tinniness, it's all better with the fine fine. I'm blown away by this. I'm surprised at this. I really am genuinely surprised. This is not my expectation at all. Wow. So there you have it. There's a comparison and a review of the Fine Fine. Been through the unboxing. We've seen some of the features of it. It's less than half the price of the HyperX Quadcast. And in my opinion, of course, we've not added EQ to it. So there's perhaps some more we can do to test this if we wanted to and if we had the time to do that. But certainly out of the box and with some basic compressor and gate settings, the Fine Fine sounds not just noticeably better than the HyperX. I would say it sounds significantly better. My feeling is the main reason for that would be the build quality. Quality. The Fine Fine is made out of a solid, heavy metal casing. I'm sure that the gear inside it makes a very big difference, but I know that the build of the microphone itself can make a massive difference, and that's one of the reasons why the Shure SM7B has done so well for so many people and podcasters. The build quality is really, really good. I'm naturally a very cynical person, so for me to just do a video that's essentially being like kind of sponsored because they provided the mic, although they've not paid me to do this review, I want to look for the negatives, and I'm not finding very many negatives. I'm really not. Probably the only downside I would say would be the lack of polar patterns for the fine fine. I definitely think they should add polar patterns. Having said that, I would always choose sound quality over a choice of polar patterns because often you can change what sound is captured and what's not by mic positioning, by, you know, changing your voice tone, moving like the angle of the microphone, and of course adding gates, compressors, and various other things like that. Don't forget to comment with the secret word. And if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and all of that kind of stuff. That's been the review. Have a good one.